New and growing concerns this weekend in Congress about sexual harassment and assault within the military. Lawmakers in a recent hearing grilling officials with the Army, Navy, Air Force and Defense Department after new reports show sexual misconduct within the JROTC program is higher than previously reported. A New York Times investigation first exposed the problem. The Pentagon now reporting at least 58 instances in the past five years where high school military instructors sexually abused or harassed students. Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman was part of the hearing. Lawmakers saying military officials have failed in proper oversight of the program. Unfortunately, recent reporting regarding sexual abuse and instructional misconduct is very concerning. The New York Times found that 33 JROTC instructors in the past five years have been criminally charged with sexual misconduct involving students. This is shameful. It's, it's at a far higher rate than civilian high school teachers. Jaron Jordan is here now. Jaron, in Wisconsin and nationwide, these are several issues that are really impacting recruiting efforts here in the state. That's right, and there are two major issues that we're highlighting today. That's both sexual assault and harassment, as well as suicide in the Army. We talked with retired Major General Marsha Anderson, a longtime Wisconsin resident who's also commanded thousands of soldiers in the Army. She now serves on the Defense Advisory Committee on the Investigation, Prosecution, and Defense of Sexual Assault in the Armed Forces. Looking at the most recent data from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Wisconsin actually leads the nation in the rate of veteran suicides. Just how big of a problem is this in our state? You know, we've got a lot of veterans who have suffered some trauma. Certainly, war is a very serious business. So it's to be expected that, I think, over time, a lot more of them are going to be coming into the system. And the VA and the military in general have been doing a lot to reduce the stigma associated with getting help, indicating that it's, it's a sign of strength to get help as opposed to weakness. But we still have some um, pre-Iraq and um, Afghanistan veterans from Vietnam in that era still using VA, VA services or should be using VA services who are not taking advantage of those opportunities and have lived for a long time with this trauma without getting it treated. So in my view, and I'm not a scientist as far as this is concerned, that could be a part of why that's happening. And also the pandemic did not happen. We all know a lot of people were isolated and that's just not good for your mental health. Absolutely. Looking at the total Army suicide numbers were at the highest in history in 2021. They have started to slightly decline in 2022, which is some good news, but even one death is far too many. What can we attribute to the slight decline over the past year or so? The Army, like the other services, has a very um, aggressive and robust suicide prevention program. And obviously, when we see a spike like we did last year, we, we do some soul searching, some, some analysis, and try to find how, where the programs have a shortfall in terms of prevention and education, and then increase our efforts to help recruits, family members even, understand uh, the suicides of suicide or ideation and to step in as quickly as they can to prevent it. Let's talk about sexual harassment and sexual assault within the Army. The number of incidents and the number of reports over the last four or five years has increased. Do you think, what do you think that that is attributed to? Are people becoming more comfortable reporting or are there more instances happening? I'm on a Department of Defense advisory committee to, to look at the investigation, prosecution, and defense of sexual assault. And we have sent many recommendations to the Department of Defense on how to improve the climate that will encourage people to report these incidents, um, the care that they get, um, getting them transferred away from, their, uh, from the uh, uh, assailant, um, ensuring that leadership encourages a climate where people will report um, incidents, and also that the individuals who are prosecuted um, are done, it's done in an environment that will yield um, fair results for both the um, victim and the accused. And so given your time and service, especially your, your service as a, as a woman in leadership within the Army, just can you break down what you heard in terms of these reports, what people are actually experiencing? Um, Many people are experiencing a much uh, more welcoming environment if they have been uh, assaulted and want to report it. I know that when I was a commander in the Army, if I got a report at any time, I would investigate it immediately and I would not waste time if there needed to be punishment um, or referring it to a higher authority for punishment. 
So I had a zero tolerance for this. Yeah, but in terms of the actual incidents, what are people actually facing? In terms of um, reporting? Yes. Or the, here? Well, the reports that they are reporting uh, to leadership, you know, what, what are some of the soldiers actually saying that they're experiencing when it comes to these issues? We have had a very aggressive program to allow people to report these in an environment that doesn't um, result in them being harassed or ostracized. So soldiers are reporting that they are able to connect with victim, victims advocates. They, in, in our um, system of justice, they have a victim advocate that's assigned to them to walk them through the legal process. So they're experiencing an opportunity to, to get some justice. Um, and then, as I also said, some mental health care and or transfer uh, from the, the location so they don't have to see their um, attacker. It's kind of a grim picture when you look at the number of incidents happening either with sexual harassment and assault or even suicide. How do you continue to recruit young men and women to join the Army given some of these difficulties? We are honest about our uh, shortcomings. We also are open about our efforts with in terms of Congress, what we're doing to combat this. Um, just as an example, a military installation is like a small city. Fort Sill, Oklahoma has 90,000 soldiers, family members and civilians on it at any one time. So you've got the same issues you might find in a small city. And our effort there is to encourage reporting, to provide an environment that supports people, and then have a justice system that is fair and equitable. And finally, while I have you on that note of Congress, does Congress need to be doing more to prevent and eradicate these issues? And what does that look like? Yeah, I think certainly Congress certainly has an oversight role. And I would hope, you know, as a former um, commander, that they would be um, engaged and actively seeking information and talking about solutions with the services, because I think that's, that's, a, that's a combined role that all of us can be um, involved in. So, Matt, as you just heard there, the veteran suicide rate in Wisconsin is concerning. In 2020, the VA reported Wisconsin's rate was significantly higher than the national average, coming in at about 38 percent compared to the national average of 31 percent. An important conversation and an important interview, Jaron. Thank you. Coming up, certification of Wisconsin's election results just days away. Now new finger pointing at former President Donald Trump.